Where is Jagaban? Have you seen him? Perhaps he has gone to see the king. Good morning, everyone. Okay, Reverend Kui Ladili. So nice to have you back. How are you, sir? Very, very fine. I hope you had a restful time over there. I rested well. That's a nice one. Uh, I'm waiting for election to be over before I take my own vacation. So let's face the heat together. Mm. Happy 52 to Nigeria. I overheard you saying the Sultan of Sokoto said we should build oneness. Yes, we should. But how is the question? Let me briefly define that. The O of oneness, we must overcome tribal and religious rancors. The N of oneness in new Nigeria is desirable. The E of oneness, every Nigeria should be involved in promoting that new Nigeria. The N of oneness, it must be Nigeria first. That should be our watchword. The E of oneness, we must engage in nation-building drives. The S of oneness, we must see every Nigeria of whatever tribe of faith as our brother and fellow Nigerian. And the last S of oneness, we must shun every evil vices that we destroy rather than build. Nigeria is the only country we can call our own. Let us build and promote our. Welcome back, Edmund. I eagerly look forward to hearing my uh, revered uh, elder, Paul Molulu Olumloyo, taking us deeper into the issue of your politics as regards the traditional institution. Have a good morning. Thank you, Reverend Kui Ladele, for calling the radio station. Mufe Koe Ladele, the last son of Koe Ladele, is on State Affairs. Mufe, how are you? Good morning, New York State. Good morning, Nigeria. I am fine. I am Mufe Ntolu Koe Ladele, the son of Reverend Koe Ladele. Are you sure you are fine? I am not very fine. I have been very sad, you know. He, the events of recent time have been at well, you know, I'm pulling through. How is your mom? She's doing fine. Your sister and your elder brother? They are doing fine. I know the death of your dad must have struck you like a thunderbolt. Mm -hmm. You know, it was like lightning. Thunderbolt only makes noise. Lightning is the real shock. What happened to him? Uh, he was... He had a surgery last year for ruptured appendicitis. And you know, this year the issue came up again, maybe an obstruction. The autopsy result is yet to be out, but once it's out, I would, would know what really happened. So we took him to a first hospital, and you know, we did not, we did not meet a doctor on duty. We spent hours there waiting for instruction, waiting for guidance, and he was on the bed. You know, there was no doctor to tell us what was really happening. No doctor? There was no doctor in the hospital. Well, you know, the family has decided that we are not taking the case up. So we've decided to let it go. Then we got to Olu Yuru Catholic Hospital and, you know, they attended to us. They started the treatment. Well, the ward was too full, you know. There were so many people on that. The, bed were sm the beds were small. The ward was too full. Too many people in the ward. The daddy complained about that environment, that he did not like the place, he wanted the place changed, you know. The, the place is an eyesore. So whoever goes there will sit for himself. Close to 12 people in one small room, you know, there is even no, there is no ventilation. They call this St. Thomas Small Ward. We are not taking off a case anyway, but you know, the, the good care was not there. The, so he asked for a private ward and he was tired of the treatment, you know. The, the thing was painful, he went outside, he protested against the treatment he was being given, he spoke out. He, he left his bed. He left his bed. In anger? In anger. 
in anger and was he weak at that time he was, he was already weak because he, he was already weak he was already weak he had not eaten that entire day you know where the doctor said he cannot eat he had to be on drip and you know he's he's not someone that takes that kind of nonsense because the, the process was taking too long the, the place was not good enough and he, he voiced out, he went to the entrance, he voiced out, then the, he collapsed and, you know, they took him back in and when I arrived there, I had been pronounced dead. In anger, he left his bed. Yeah. He wanted better treatment. He wanted better treatment. While he was protesting, he collapsed. While he was protesting, he collapsed. That was what happened? That was what happened. So... Koye protested for a good Nigeria. He died protesting. He died protesting. He died protesting. The program is State Affairs. You are a writer, and I've read some of your writings. Thank you. know, you. your father contributed to radio programs for years, fighting for a new Nigeria. Did Nigeria serve him well? You know, my my father has been someone that is very passionate about good government. You know, there was a day he told me that in the United Kingdom, these trees have database. If you look at trees on the road, you know, they have database of when that tree was planted, the problem that tree has, you know, the, the place that tree is. That's how much they take care of. That's how much they take cognizance into, into data and facts. But in Nigeria, you don't have that type of thing. You know, he, he spoke about when he was in Dubai and his staff got stolen and he thought that was the end and they were able to check the CCTV and they found it for him. And he, he has seen better governance elsewhere and he wants that in Nigeria too. All his life, he supported the United Unity Party of Nigeria, UPN, he supported Awolo War, he supported MK Abiola, supported Bolaige, supported... He has lived his life fighting for a good Nigeria. He, he, he was a pastor, he had a calling, but at the same time, he never abandoned the, the societal goal of things. You know, I grew up with so many people that you can see someone on the street and bring that person home. He was that type of person that will see you homeless and bring you home and take care of you, you know. There are so many people from way back, 2000, 2001, who are now doing fine, who are people you met. You know, in the in the ghetto, in the underworld, you know. So he, he wanted a good Nigeria. He lived for a good Nigeria. He would often joke about contesting for the presidency to do it himself. You know, he of course we would laugh about it at home, but it was it was the man that wanted change for this country. He lived it with his life, lived it with his money, practiced it with his ministry, and you know, even if. At some point, he, he was sympathetic to the Buhari administration because, he, like many of us, we thought they would bring change. But, you know, he, towards the end of his life, he, he was not really happy with the, the level of success the government was recording. So he started voicing out that, you know, it, it can be better than this. And he, he, was, he was a very good man, you know, he did it for, for the fun of it, you know. At some point, some people suspected monetary motivation, but you know, I grew up with this man. He has no money anywhere. I saw his bank account after I died. There is nothing in it for anybody. He, he did not. He did not have wealth of this world. Of course, he built his house. He built a church. He built. He built. He inherited maybe one or two properties from his mother, but he was not a wealthy man. He, he was moderate. He did not have super super flaunts, but he was very passionate about society. He lived for it and he died for it. He died protesting. He died protesting. <laughs>